if you've been cycling for a while, then it'll come up in conversation at some point at a party, a barbecue, or a Christmas dinner. And someone will go, hey, hey, you cycle, do you? And you'll go, yeah, yeah, yeah. And of course, you don't really want to get involved with the conversation because you know where it's going. And then the next comment will be, but isn't that dangerous? And there seems to be this perception by drivers that cycling, and especially if you cycle on the road, it is dangerous. And even if you do cycle on the road, you should be riding on cycle paths and you shouldn't be on the road and you're a hazard to traffic. Well, let's roll that intro and let's have a little bit of a deep dive. Is cycling really that dangerous? Well, let's look at statistics in Australia. And if we look at cars, which is the automotive industry, the amount of deaths on average are around about 1,100 to 1,200 people per year in Australia that die in car accidents. And then we look at pedestrians, which is the second highest. And pedestrians are generally around about 150 to 180 people die per year. And then we have cyclists, and the cyclists vary between about 40 to 60. It's, it's gone up a little bit in recent times because cycling has been a little bit more popular. But cycling, statistically, if you look at those figures as far as deaths per year, is significantly lower than even pedestrians and massively lower than accidents in cars. Well, people might say, hang on a sec, you travel a lot further in a car, so it could be actually safer per kilometres travelled than a bicycle. Well, there has been studies, but more related to head injuries. And what that basically says, it doesn't matter if you're actually walking or you're riding a bicycle or you're driving a car, head injuries are pretty consistent compared to kilometres travelled. So I think that's a pretty good indicator that it kind of averages out because what we're seeing is, is there's, there's more kilometres travelled in cars, but head injuries are about the same. So what that would mean is, is that uh, per kilometre, then someone is having a significant accident. So what that really shows is, even though in Australia it's mandatory to wear a helmet, that it isn't really any more dangerous to ride a bike and you're not going to suffer a head injury any more than driving a car or just walking down the street. So what we conclude from all this is that cycling really isn't that dangerous and it really isn't any more dangerous than driving a car. But what I think is the issue here is it's in the perception because when you're riding a bike, you haven't got a body or a metal frame around you like you have a car. You feel, you feel that perception of safety when you drive a car, which when you're riding a bicycle on a major road, you don't because Obviously, you're sitting on a bicycle, if someone hits you, you're going to suffer a lot more injuries at, say, 30 or 40 kilometres an hour than someone who has an accident in a car at 30, 40 kilometres an hour. So the, the consequence of an incident is much greater, but the, the amount of incidents that happen really is actually less. So if you really look at this, then you have to really come to the conclusion that cycling is potentially actually safer than driving your car. And what I think the biggest problem is with the interaction between cars and cyclists is the fact that drivers have got this perception that roads are for cars and cyclists should be on the footpath or on a cycle path and that's where they're designed to be. They're not designed to be on the road and it's more of an entitlement that they have rather than isn't that dangerous. So if we look at it from a vehicle, a car and a bicycle, and we forget about the statistics, we forget about who should own the road, then we'll have to come back to the fact is what really is more dangerous. And let's just be real about this. A bicycle 
usually weighs under 10 kilos, or a road cycling bicyclist, usually 10 kilos or less. Whilst a car can weigh something between one to two tons, or if it's a van, probably even more. So when we have energy built up in a mass, we have inertia, and then we have kinetic energy built up in that vehicle. So a bicycle is gonna have far less kinetic energy than a car. So if you have an impact, if a car runs into a house, a wall, traffic light, it's going to do significant damage. But a bicycle, if I run into a traffic pole, I'm just gonna bounce off and hurt myself. It's not gonna even damage the traffic pole at all. Or if I run into a house, my bike's gonna break. It's not gonna do any damage to a brick wall. So the reality is the danger is related to the automotive vehicle. It's not related to the bicycle. Well, let's just go full circle and go back to that person that made that statement, isn't cycling dangerous? Now, I think we've shown that really statistically, riding a bicycle is not any more dangerous than any other vehicle. It could even probably be argued it's probably actually safer. Now, why does that person have that attitude? Now, we do know that if a cyclist is killed, and some news article puts that out, you can see in the comments that people really come back with some really harsh statements about, oh, the bicycle shouldn't have been on the road, they should have been on the footpath, they should have been on a cycle path, and you go, well, there's no cycle path there, or there wasn't any footpath or whatever, or it was dangerous on the footpath because there's a lot of pedestrians. They don't want to hear any of that. They just want that bicycle off the road, and if the bicycle was on the road, it's their own fault. Now, this comes back, I do believe, from the perception that drivers believe that it's their right to be on the road and all other vehicles have some sort of, or a pedestrian crossing the road, has some sort of lower right to cross the road or be on the road. So if they get hit in some way, then it's kind of their own fault because they shouldn't have been there. But that is actually incorrect. Under law, I know in Australia anyway, a bicycle is a recognised vehicle and it has every right to be on the road as a car does. Whether it's registered or not, it has a right to be there. And I think what the biggest problem is that it's about entitlement and people get upset when that their, their trip to wherever they're going gets hindered and they get held up by the bicycles. And then in their head they're thinking, why the hell are these bicycles on the road? And of course they become angry. And we've seen, you know, people throw things at other or try and scare them with their vehicle and use their vehicle as an intimidation. And those sorts of things are really nasty. I'm not saying that's all drivers, but some drivers do go to that extreme to try and encourage or scare cyclists to get off the road. But if we actually look at from the other side of the coin, we've got to a part in the world now where a lot of big cities are now are discouraging passenger vehicles from coming into the cities because they've tried all sorts of things like share schemes and special lanes that you can travel in if you have more than one person in your car and they've been relatively unsuccessful because people don't want to go and pick up or help someone else they don't want to share their car they just want to drive their car straight to work they don't have to go and pick someone up or wait for someone because they're running a bit late because it's an inconvenience and and i just want to get to work so they're not really tolerant or want to make an effort to reduce the amount of cars on the road or reduce infrastructure, reduce the cost to the taxpayer because then they could build less roads. They just want to drive the car. So what's actually happened now is, is cities have actually decided, hey, well, guys, <laughs> enough is enough. And we're either going to make the road smaller in the cities or we're going to have a toll or we're going to limit your access to the cities and you've got to use some other form of getting into that city, be it a train, walking or a bicycle. So that's where we're going. And even in some continental countries now, they're actually giving the bicycle the entitlement that they need to be able to be on the road. So if a vehicle hits a bicycle, the vehicle is automatically to blame. And I think this is where we're going to end up, or hopefully we're gonna end up in the future, because I know in Australia and America, we're really a long way from that sort of viewpoint, and people would freak out if the government brought a law in like that at currently. But I know in some countries, obviously, as I said in continental Europe, that's why it's been. And those laws have been around for quite a while. So, wrapping it all up, 
really cycling is not dangerous and it's really to me is a behavioural problem. The behavioural problem is with the drivers because they have the entitlement and they have this belief the bicycle should be off the road and infrastructure should be provided for them and if it's not they should be on the footpath. And I think also they see bicycles more as a recreational tool or a, a toy for children. They don't really see it as a vehicle that should be on the road. Well anyway guys, leave your comments down below because this is a pretty hot topic with a lot of people. And what's your viewpoint on this drivers versus cyclists and really cyclists shouldn't be on the road story that they always put out. Well, that's where I'm going to leave it, guys, and I'm going to see you next vid.